in my work, I study the brain. The brain! I know, it's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, after all, it's the brain. Come on. Then some individuals start to ask me about the specifics. So in what context do you study the brain? And I say, the aging brain. Oh, for some reason, the enthusiasm of my fans tends to level off. You know, how fun is that? How fun can it be to study the aging brain? And sure, a lot of times we, when we talk about the aging brain, it's quite a depressive story. I mean, we have horrible data showing that when you age, your brain shrinks, you lose your memory, and then you ended up being demented. How fun can that be? So, why am I still so enthusiastic about the aging brain? Do we have anything to look forward to besides big holes in your brain and loss of memory? When I hear depressive stories such as the one about the aging brain, I, I tend to think, who can I blame? Who's responsible for this and who can I pay to fix it? And then the first thing that comes into my mind is, what about the parents? What have they done? And looking at the genetics of memory functions and age, actually about 50% of your memory when you get old, you know, you could actually blame your parents for it. That's pretty good. I kind of like those odds. So half the times you do forget something, blame your folks. But what that also says is that for the other half, it's yo-yo time. You're on your own, you know? So for half the times, you could actually take charge of your own memory when you get old. And I don't know about you, but I actually like those odds even better. Even though it means that for half the times I do forget something, I can only blame myself. So the question I think you should start be asking yourself is, how do you want to age? I would like to share a little story with you. A few weeks ago, my husband Ulf and I, we visited my grandpa. My grandpa is 91. I mean, come on, 91, that's a good age. And his memory is just fine, so if 50% is genetic, yay, good for me. Yeah. My grandpa is great. He, I mean, he lives in a regular house with his wife, no medication, never complains. He's really healthy. And he's so enthusiastic about life. I mean, he's 91, but still enthusiastic. So when we were down there, I thought, maybe I should you know, ask him about that. Why is he so enthusiastic? Unfortunately, I, I started in the wrong end. I said, hey, Grandpa, you're old, right? And he looked at me like, what? How can you say you're, I'm old? Do you know for how long people had told me that I'm old? And I was like, well, you're 91, so you know you're old. He said, even when I was 60 or 65, people started to tell me that I'm old. And I was like, wow, that's a third of your life. So imagine that for a third of your life, people might view you as having big holes in your brains and no memory. <laughs> huh? And then he continued, you know what I did? You know what I did when I turned 65? I said, like, no, I didn't. I, I wasn't born. I was in Paris. I was in Paris the day I turned 65. And I bought the nicest bottle of cognac I could find. And I told myself that day that I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this and I'm going to open it when I turn 100. And before that, I'm going to do tons of exciting things in my life. Pretty cool. And then it takes off you know, and comes back with the bottle showing it so it's real. You know, and then he has a big smile on his face and he says, and I can't wait for it to happen. I think that's pretty cool. And I think it tells us something about the decision I want you to make. How do you want to age? 
shouldn't just sit there the last third of your life and waiting. You could actually do something about it. So what can we do in order to take charge of our own brain health when we get older? When I look at brains, and uh, I do encounter individuals with big holes in their brains. And you think, how can this person even function at all? But you also encounter people that seem to resist age-related declines in brain structure, in brain function, even though they are old. And I always think, what have they done? If I could figure out what they do, I want to do the same, because their brains look fine. And one thing that we actually can do is exercise. Exercise is not only good for your heart, it's also good for your brain. We have seen that people that exercise regularly, they maintain their brain functions for decades compared to those that don't take part in exercise. Don't worry, if you haven't started yet, there appears to be time, because if we start to exercise, even when, you, when you're getting older, you could actually improve your memory functions. And key regions in the brain that shrink when we get older, and key regions for dementia actually can grow in size just by starting to exercise. I mean, how cool isn't that? I mean, that's incredible. And we have also started to see that what you eat also affects your brain functions. And that if you're a little overweight, losing weight could actually improve your memory and your functional brain response. Huh? That's really good. And, like that's not enough, having an active mind with puzzles and crosswords and all kinds of mind games or memory training, that is also good for your memory functions when you do get older. So there appears to be tons of things that you actually can do in order to take charge of your own aging and your brain functions. So have you asked yourself the question yet? How do you want to age? Sure, there are some things that we can't take control of. Bad things can happen. But I wouldn't wait. I would take charge of the things that I actually can take charge of. My name is CJ Boraksbeck. I'm 34 years old, and I have figured out how I want to age. I have about two-thirds of my life left, and it would be sad if I would look at the next third as okay and the last third as, you know, awful. So I think it's about time you ask yourself the question, how do you want to age? Thank you. <laughs>